So this is just a little short video, um, just kind of about mixing colors of paint. So I saw this sunset or sunrise. I don't really know if it's a sunset or a sunrise, but I saw it posted on one of my friend's Instagram pages and it's um, from Panama City Beach, Florida. And I just really loved the subtle color changes and it just really kind of um, gave me like a mood and an emotion and a feeling. And so I decided to do a painting. However, as you'll see with my painting, I am changing it a little bit because I added some focal points with birds in the sky and also um, a child and kind of changed the bottom of the piece to not be the trees in the house, but actually um, a groundscape with a child um, leaping and imitating the birds. So anyway, my first step when I'm working with these kinds of really complex colors and subtle color changes is to just get out a lot of paint that um, is related to the color palette of the piece. So I have a lot of different blues, a lot of purples, pinks, reds, yellows. Um, that's the palette that I'm gonna be working with. So I'm gonna mostly use those colors. And then what I wanna do, because I am painting in acrylics, um, clouds, any kind of cloud painting or sky painting, you really have to do wet and wet. And this is the color of my toned canvas, by the way. Um, so I toned it kind of a peach color, just as like the undertone for the other colors to lay on top of. But anyway, with, with um, painting clouds, you really have to do wet and wet. You cannot do uh, let, let it dry and then go back in and have the same effect. So what I like to do is take all of these different tubes of paint and experiment with mixing colors until I get just the right colors for the basic palette for the piece. So this is the basic palette that I came up with, kind of a darker purple um, and then a lighter purple, a couple shades of pink, some peach, some blues. And what I'm gonna do is on this toned canvas, just go ahead and um, cut the tips off of these little bags. So I've mixed the colors and then put them in little clear bags. Um, to keep them from drying out and then I just cut the tip off of the bag and then just kind of squirt it out onto the palette like a tube of paint so it's almost like making your own little tubes of paint because this will allow you to um, squeeze out fresh colors um, each time so this is the um, sky painting so I just did the sky painting just free form um, because then I'm going to layer like the birds and the child and the ground imagery on top of this. So if you get distracted by a pet or a kid or life in general, and you have to step away and your paints dry up because acrylics dry very quickly, then you can just squeeze out another little bit of the color out of that little bag and not have to remix that whole color all over again because if you have to remix it all over again, you may not achieve the exact color that you had previously. And then some of these subtle areas like where the pink and the peach um, meet up or some of those purple tones, um, even the, the purple up in the top, the little wispy purple clouds on top of the blue, those things really have to be done um, with both colors wet at the same time to get the right effect. So after I finished the sky, I went ahead and um, painted some birds. These are seagulls just flying over overhead and I used Payne's Gray. Um, and what I did is I diluted the Payne's Gray with a little bit of water just to make it um, a little transparent and I sketched the birds out with that. And then I went back with a little bit more dense Payne's Gray um, as a second layer and kind of solidified the bodies of the birds. So it kind of um, shows a little bit of the sky through some of the edges, you know, as a transition, but um, the body parts are more dense, if that makes sense. <laughs> so um, these are the birds in the top of the sky. And then I also use Payne's Gray for the child leaping below, imitating the birds in flight and also for the grass and the groundscape um, at the bottom of the composition. So. It's really just simple. The, the palette that I mixed with those um, colors that I, I mixed and put in the bags um, to continue to use while I was doing the sky. And then just a tube of Payne's Gray 
um, P-A-Y-N-E-S is how you spell Payne's gray. Um, it does look like black when it dries, but it has a blue undertone that really works nicely for um, compositions with cool colors like this one. So yeah, this is the finished piece and I just called it Child's Play and I recently posted it on my website and yay, it sold. So there, I just shipped the original, um, but I wanted to share with you a few ideas and notes and tips about just mixing paint and keeping them, um, keeping those paint colors, those really specific colors wet by storing them in little bags. Another idea is to store them in ice cube trays and put saran wrap over the top of it. However, I feel like that's like more within a day's time you can do that. Um, they do tend to dry out if you're trying to store them in the ice cube trays for very long because it doesn't take much air to um, dry out acrylic paint. So anyway, just a few side notes. I just wanted to share these little thoughts because I know that sunsets and sunrises are a common theme and subject matter for painters. So if you are going to be painting a sunrise or sunset um, and you're using acrylics instead of oil paint, then go ahead and use some of these techniques. Also, I just um, wanted to mention too that I do a brush varnish over the top of my paintings and you always want to make sure that dries for a full 24 hours before handling the art. So if I do sell something right away, I always make sure that my varnish is fully cured before wrapping and packaging and shipping that. So hope you enjoyed and I will keep the art tutorials coming.